Hi, um, thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, do you all hear me? Yes. You hear me okay? Um, so um, um, I'm, uh, I'm uh, joining from uh, Okinawa um, because I had a schedule conflict and I really um, appreciate uh, the sick free uh, organizers and uh, um, supporters uh, inviting us and then having us today at the conference. We're really excited to present our um, uh, research today with you. Um, our panel is titled um, Island Memories and Resilience in Taiwan, Guam, and Okinawa. And we have um, um, uh, some key words in common, memories, resilience, the rights, the environment, and feminist epistemologies. Um, well, feminist epistemologies may not be uh, something that we have in common, but it's my uh, keyword. And uh, before we begin, uh, we, uh, I would like to introduce uh, today's panelists uh, in the order of the presentation. Uh, first, we have uh, Professor uh, So Hatano, and uh, he is um, from the University of Syracuse. He is a professor and the director uh, of the Research Institute for Islands and Sustainability at the university. His research focuses on um, 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 uh, um, uh, architectural history. And uh, now, next we will have a professor um, Ikegami, uh, Daisuke Ikegami. Uh, he is an associate professor uh, in the Faculty of Global and Regional Studies at the University of Virtus. His research interests include the history of the U.S. overseas uh, positions with a focus on Guam and contemporary history of the Pacific Islands War Memory Studies. And um, I am um, um, also from the uh, Research Institute for the uh, Islands and for Islands and Sustainability. And um, I am uh, uh, currently the editor for the Okinawan Journal of Island Studies, and uh, we um, uh, worked with Sikri, uh, and in particular um, Mao Sensei and Valia to collaborate on a, a previous issue on uh, island uh, culture and heritage. And we're uh, extremely honored to have that opportunity with Sikri, and then also to continue our collaborative work uh, in the future. So without further ado, um, I'll pass, um, pass it to uh, Professor Hatano uh, to present his uh, research on uh, title of cultural heritage and its authenticity. from the Research Institute of for Islands and Sustainability at the University of Ryukyu, Okinawa, Japan. I'm glad to be here. And today, uh, I would like to talk about the recent developments of Jingwa Mai, Taiwan, uh, which I have been involved in for nearly 20 years. I this is the flow of today's topic from the long introduction to rigid behavior of regions as selective morning of the past. Actually, for us, I mean uh, for our institute, for research, researching islands and sustainability, the term islands or insula is a very problematic. In particular, many researchers have shown that remoteness and isolation, as you know, uh, that is a relative positioning of islands from a certain center it is necessary to position island space as an emergent product of various relationships generated by various encounters. In other words, it is necessary to focus directly on the island space itself as a region where various relationships are stirring. If we dare to say more, it means that the mainland or continent itself cannot be defined without relations with islands. This perspective is also related 
to the question of what to evaluate the value of islands. However, while the conversion of islands cultural elements into cultural heritage based on certain historical perspective or the conversion of an island into tourism resource based on certain economic philosophy may play a certain role in visualizing an island's value, they may also discard the diversity of values and the simplify the relationship among them. And many of values that originally exist on the island may be eliminated by the trend towards the formulation of island values by those outside the island, which are then considered normative values. Nevertheless, it is under and undeniable that normative value recognition has a certain role to play. So, can normative value recognition and the multiple and the diverse values coexist in the same place, space? I believe that the Qinghua's mine in Taiwan, sorry, located in the northern part of Taiwan Island, is uh, to instant resolution of this problem. The entire area is considered as a museum and is managed by an organization named the Gold Museum, where uh, objects from the Japanese colonial period remain to this day. However, the evaluation is limited to representative example in the history of mining development in Taiwan. The evaluation is based solely on the positive elements of the development history and ignores the background of the conflicts, struggles, cooperation, and harmony that have stirred up in the area. While the cultural heritage and the landscape are protected by such an assessment embodied national norms for given condition, they run the risk of neglecting the diversity of values that are supposed to be present in this region and Taiwan. Whatever the struggles and conflicts over land use and ownership that stem from colonialism, both past and present, will be turned away from. And uh, only those elements that are visible will be protected. Therein lies in the problem of normatization or normalization of objects and cultural heritage. Such action play a certain role in the development of this region. But can region lie or live only within normative values created by cultural heritage conversion? The answer is no. Uh, currently, yes. This area, Jinga's mind, is experiencing a new phenomenon of dis dissonance from as norms of the state and local government. Pictured above left is a store built by local residents who have been excluded from the establish establishment and the operation of the museum. The location of shutters is the boundary of the museum. The street is inside the museum site and the interior of the store is outside the museum site. It means local residents built these stores to show their spatially excluded encounter or counterparts. <laughs> On the upper right is a building called the Taishi Guest House. It was built in the Taisho era, it means uh, 1920s, uh, for the Crown Prince's visit to Taiwan. It is now designated as an important cultural heritage site, but a few years ago, the owner painted the world purple color. The owner painted was purple color as part of the maintenance of his property, which is of course illegal. The Gold Museum protested, but not much changed. Uh, below right is a, a Tori gate of Japanese colonial era shrine called the Gold Shrine. The owner has filled in the uh, uh, locked parts with something. This is also illegal but the owner wanted to make it look good. And the lower left is a brick building made by brick. However, in order to create a Japanese-style appearance, the gold museum has covered it 
with the club poles uh, with wood, which are typical of Japanese houses. This is very important and because uh, this is a brick house, but like a wood house. As you can see, there are many uh, deviations from the norms in the actual site. We believe that authenticity of the site is, uh, what shall I say, is shaking out. And the next example is a good one. Three years ago, a local resident painted the carpets of the stairs by this colorful manner. The person, the resident person, wanted to glamorize his place of living. The gold museum and the media, such as TV, news, and SNS, they were very critical. Many criticized that historical landscape was ruined. Then, the legends do not think this is wrong at all. Rather, they argue with the museum and the media, asking why we are the only ones who have to live conservatively. Today, the place is a photogenic place and uh, attracts many tourists. So, what these series of actions remind us of is still the question of whose heritage it is and what does the historical landscape mean to us? Here again, I would like to introduce Jinwa's mind now. Uh, right side is a shrine and the left side is a smelting hut uh, constructed in, uh, during Japan's period. It means uh, 1930s. And this is a museum area with uh, a Japanese style building and uh, a mining area. The Gold Museum has been working with us to conduct uh, reconstructive research and study on this site, relying on documents related to the Taiwan Governor Office and drawings, photographs, and documents created by the mining company in Japanese period. As shown in this diagram, we have restored layout of the facilities like this. Uh, this is extremely important work for us. However, it can be said self-critically that we have only restored the site from the viewpoint or perspective of the government and the mining companies. On the other hand, there is a historical reality of life in the area that can be, cannot be seen from materials related to the Taiwan Governor General's office and other sources. What kind of relationship existed between Japanese and Taiwanese? What kind of life Taiwanese pe uh, people did? Or what kind of entertainment did they have? And so on. There are so many topics that are di difficult to understand from the surviving documents. So they are all in the memories of the uh, regions. Therefore, we have been trying to clarify their life history by interviewing them. However, due to the decline of memories and the decrease of traces and the replacement of residents, the past has gone over the years. Therefore, some legends have begun a historical practice of setting up their own private exhibition, exhibition halls, named the Culture Museum, and exhibiting all the models of past architecture and spaces, relying on their own memories and those previous generations. I think uh, it is easy to imagine that the past of which the model was built is composed of a variety of characteristics, including one's own experience, information obtained through uh, interactions with uh, other generations, a mixture of both old photographs and so on. In other words, the past delight upon is not one, but a complex mixture of different memories from different eras and in some cases, memories that are different from the actual facts. The past newly created by such information may not necessarily be the same as the historical facts revealed by historical research by us. And the model created based on the past with such characteristics may not be identical to the shape of the mining facilities 
that exist in the past. past. But can we dismiss such activities as the idle work of amateurs? The parties involved are quite serious. So what is the intention of the local residents in promoting the specialization of the past or modeling the past? And what significance do they find in visualizing the past? This is one question. I can introduce one person, a man, let's call him A. Uh, he also started working as a tourist guide in Jinwaza Mine. And he saw that while many tourists visit the Gold Museum, and many others did not want to visit the local living areas because they did not think there was anything to see. This led him to think of ways to attract tourists. The first thing that came to mind was the coloring of stairs. This one. Light one. And this man, A, thought that he had succeeded in drawing attention to the area from the outside. When Mr. A saw the number of tourists visiting the staircase increasing every weekend, he began to think with his colleagues and the curator of God Museum about what more could be done. They came to the conclusion that they needed a place where they could talk about their own lives and the memories of the past. As a result, they came up with the idea of making models. And Spaceful Models was established to introduce the history and lifestyle to tourists by leading them to old street, old area. But it has become a place not only for tourists, but also for people who were born and raised here, and now living in urban areas such as Taipei. This was a surprise to those involved in the establishment of this place. However, the media and facilities models served as a platform for bringing together the regions and the outcasts. And it has also served as a place where the outcasts can talk about their pride of this region and share it with others. The model is like this. I think this is not correct as a past. For example, we can see these two photographs. It's the early Shuwa period, 1930s. Uh, they had they a uh, shrine of the right side. The main building was the Hall of Worship and the Tory Gate, newly constructed in the, this, era, in this era, 1930s. However, the after style of the main shrine building and the worship hall differ greatly between the two. Uh, right left side is a major era, I mean, uh, 1910, uh, 1990, 1910. But the model is like this. The main shrine is gabled, uh, and this model shows the creativity of the artist in terms of form as well as a mixture of situations from different periods. I mean, uh, left side totally is a different one, and right side building has a, a shower model, and left side has a major model. So uh, I think uh, It is easy to criticize the condition of these models in terms of their authenticity. Both cases are displayed with the explanatory text and old photographs regarding their feature and history. Nevertheless, the forms depicted in the old photographs are not identical to those of the models. From the standpoint of museum or curator, authenticity is an issue that requires the utmost attention. If one were to ask whatever, uh, whether or not the exhibit uh, place for models 
are authentic. The answer would naturally be no. However, for the parties involved, making matter of authenticity is not so issue. They did not need to pay, atten pay attention to the detailed format and properties of the models. The authenticity of the model does not mean anything to them. So, uh, I have to conclude. A model is a, a reproduction of past event, and the model is not necessarily the same as what once existed. What the model shows is only past with surmount according to the demands of, the demands of the contemporary society. Therefore, the memorization of the past through the process and the result of making the model has a different meaning from the localization of the authentic past. In other words, what intervened between the recollection of the past and its materialization and specialization in the process of model making is not the authenticity of the past and its form, but meaninglessness of its determination of authenticity. As long as the model is not the state for a morning of the past, the question of the authenticity of the result of its materialization and the specialization itself becomes meaningless. So uh, memory is uh, reinforced by creativity and emerges as something that can be shared and dispersed uh, through visualization, materialization, and specialization. As such, criticizing the model as unlike or inauthentic does not make any sense, at least not to them, residents. Here, the question of historical correctness itself is dismissed. Dismissing the issue is a way of life for the local people in a place where state-owned enterprise founded by the post-war communist government continue to want a majority of the land. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hatano, and uh, um, we will move on to the next presentation and the Q and A uh, um, at the end all together. So, um, Ikigan Sensei, please uh, go ahead. Uh, my name is Daisuke Kegami, and uh, I teach uh, Western Europe and American history at the University of Duke. Uh, but I focus on uh, uh, United States naval, admi naval military administration in Guam, uh, 1940s. Uh, so, uh, my presentation title is Militarized Environment and Resilience in Guam. Uh, so this is my first presentation in English. So <laughs> I was very nervous. So, um, um, so please allow me to read the um, paper uh, loud out. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, due to time constraints, uh, so I will skip or replace uh, some parts in um, brief paper. I apologize. <coughs> so introduction. Uh, Guam under United States military. The United States has extended and sustained the global military base network since World War II. And the Pacific regions have played an integral, um, integral role in the United States military expansion. Guam Island, which is located in the southernmost uh, part of the Marian Island in the Pacific, was annexed to the United States after the end of the Spanish American War in 1868. Not being granted political status, and Guam was under control of the United States Naval Administration until 1950. 
During World War II, Guam was invaded and occupied by the Japanese Army from December 1941 to July 1944. After Liberation Day and July 21, United States Navy reconstructed the military administration expand the military base in Guam. Until the 1950s, uh, entrance to Guam was restricted due to the necessity of guarding top military secrets. From around 2000, John Mitchell, who is a journalist, revealed that the United States military base had poisoned land and sea in Guam with noxious chemicals such as dioxin, TCD, and PFOS or PFOA. Uh, next part is uh, skipped. Uh, next, A, this presentation. In the field of I am historian, so uh, in the field of historical research today, discussion of military base and security have been treated as political and diplomatic history. Discussion of war monument and battlefield as war memory studies. An issue of military pollution as environment history, with few opportunities to discuss them comprehensively. Therefore, to connect disparate research situations, uh, I will reveal that how local residents in Guam recognize the World War II, especially Battle of Guam, and the environment pollution caused by United States military operations that based in Guam. To do so, I will try to use the concept of uh, militarized, militarized environment and resilience. Uh, two, the concept of militarized environment. Chris Pearson, who is a specialist of the environment history and war and militarization in France, defines militarized environment as simultaneously and a material and cultural site has been, uh, that has been partially or fully uh, mobilized to achieve uh, military aims. Then, um, he explains the definition as following next page. <coughs> ah, uh, and below. So uh, I have no time, and the uh, three points uh, quoted is the uh, skip, um, skip it, uh, next statements. Uh, also, uh, Pearson studies covered France from the mid 19th century to the 2000s and only land-based analysis. But I believe this definition is uh, appro applicable, applicable to Pacific Ocean as well. Three, memorizing the Pacific War in Guam, um, but uh, three one point Battle of Guam, about, bat about Battle of Guam is, a, I'm sorry, skipped, uh, next topics. Um, the war memorial dispute during the 1960s. Kennedy administration's de um, de deliberating the restrictions for entering Guam Island in 16, 1962, followed, followed by the Japanese government uh, liberalization of overseas travel allowed the Japanese memorial delegation for the war debt to visit Guam free freely. For example, in August 1965, South Pacific War Memorial Delegation in Japanese Minami Taiheo Senbosha Ireda, led by Mitsunori Ueki, a member of the Japanese Diet, visited Guam to conduct, it, to conduct on on site me memorial service. Um, in May 1966, a representative Weki who visited Guam and signed onto the agreement for the plan that 
the people from Japan and Guam should plan to work together to construct the public memorial park for Japanese war victims with Father Oscar Cargo. He is one of the local leaders in Guam. It should be also pointed out that Guam's decision to join the plan uh, surmise that uh, economic benefit will, would be gained through the future increase of business opportunities brought to local communities by Japanese tourists. And based on Japanese memorial delegation, short time tourists stay in Guam. However, the plan met fierce opposition from veterans in the mainland United States. For example, a Washington Post article on December 14, 1966, quoted the statement by Congressman Richard White, who had served in the Battle of Guam, criticizing Low Leon Guerrero, the governor of Guam, because the governor of Guam endorsed, endorsed the construction of the South Pacific Memorial Park. White and the White other veteran members of Congress in the United States uh, prefer to submit the bill to stop and to construction of the South Pacific War Memorial Park, while they are also drawing up the bill to propose a memorial site for um, deceased, de deceased American soldiers. As a result, the South Pacific War Memorial Monument was erected since the construction had already started. However, the plan to create park was cancelled. Following the incident, on August 7, 1978, the federal, uh, federal government decided to construct the historical park in Guam. So um, the wall in the Pacific National Historical Park in the uh, Guam uh, to comply with the veterans' request. Next, uh, the plan for wall in the Pacific uh, National Historical Park in 1917 to 80s. This section. Examine, examine how the concept of the war in the Pacific National Historical Park in Guam was implemented. The plan was made by Western Regional Office of the National Park Service, a section of Department in Department of the Interior. Uh, in, Jan in January 1983, the Western Regional Office produced an over 100 page long document entitled Environmental Assessment General Management Plan, War in the Pacific National Historical Park, Guam, here after GMP. According to GMP, um, War Memorial Park was constructed in coastal areas where the United States military landed to fight the Battle of Guam. And in inland areas where uh, there remain ruins of former Japanese army camp and batteries. They also preserved the landscape and the remains as historical resources and installed explanatory panels to uh, present the parks as site to remember or imagine the Battle of Guam. In, those, in doing so, they expected many of the visitors to be tourists from Japan and therefore pay the most attention to them in analyzing the park's use. In the 1970s, 70% uh, of the tourists uh, visiting Guam came from Japan. And that's it may be appropriate to assume that Japanese visitors were considerably highly expected tourist consumers. On page 4. 
Another group of prospective park users was the residents in Guam. And they were expected to use the park in this way. Generally, they will be visiting the park as individuals, families, or other small groups. And their primary focus on most visits will be the park's natural resources and recreation opportunities. Activities such as picnicking, fishing, boating, and other informal recreational use will uh, predominate especially among the local Chamorro population. Um, the National Park Service uh, carefully manages the park so that the facility would not have a negative impact on everyday life of the people in the park's neighborhood. In other words, the goal of the more historical park was to be acknowledged as a place for the residents to enjoy their everyday leisure time. And four, um, the environment pollution caused by United States military operation in Guam. For one, chemical pollution. Um, next, I will introduce the case study of military pollution from United States military base and activities, which is a uh, position as a military militarized environment. I would like to point out the case in the which there is a discrepancy between the United States military stance of withholding information and the testify of veterans who tell his experience. Um, in 2003, letter from the Pentagon to the uh, uh, Senator, it was reported that in 1952, and 50,000 cans of Agent Orange uh, containing dioxin were delivered and stored in the United States territory in Guam uh, in, part anticipation in, in participation of its use in the Korean War. However, the Pentagon claimed that Agent Purple was only stored temporarily, never used in Guam and relocated back to the United States. And there were no records of the other herbicides. However, service members stationed in Guam in the 1960s. And, uh, yes. Ah, OK, OK, sorry, OK, OK. So um, this uh, case is the chemical pollution. And the uh, next point, the builder on Pagat Beach in Guam, uh, there are uh, a live fire range making up the United, United Depart Department of Defense uh, plan. Uh, it's planning the construct uh, area of live fire range in Pagat Village. Uh, this case is a uh, 4-2 section. And uh, five, uh, last point, uh, resilience against militarized environment in Guam. Uh, I'm not especially theorizing the meaning, meaning of resilience, so difficult for me to define the concept clearly. But uh, uh, Ginoza and Shimizu uh, experience, uh, experience, based on the, uh, their ex explanation, my presentation will take a rough look at the meaning of the resilience as the ability to sustainability connect to the proactive activities people living in the community. Um, next part, War Memorial Park for the local community. Um, this part is uh, uh, examining how the local communities revise the plan for war in the Pacific National Historical Park. Uh, this part, what I'm trying to explain here is uh, that local residents did not necessarily accept the public memory as it was assume, assumed by the federal government, uh, but in their own sense of life. 
So page six, uh, local resistance against nuclear pollution. Um, in Guam, um, many, uh, many cases of uh, military pollution, uh, local groups and local government, uh, local uh, delegates uh, is uh, counter the case and the pollution, um, military pollution. And it's explained, this part is explaining that thing. I'm sorry to, uh, I have no time, so and uh, last page, I have to, I show the conclusion. Um, considering the case of United States military in Guam, uh, Pearson's concept of militarized environment provide a comprehensive perspective on such military bases as diplomatic history, uh, battlefield, as war memorial studies, um, pollution as uh, environment history. Uh, from there, there is a uh, movement towards proactive community building by the local residents who are asking how to accept and um, develop, developing assist resistance movement based on Chamorro culture and history and that developed ideas of decolonization to prevent military reinforcement. Uh, based on the above discussion, I believe that local residents are able, were able to uh, demonstrate the power of resilience in the sense that they are not simply subordinate to the strategy and public, uh, public memory assumed by the major power or home country, in this case, the United States, but were flexible and strategic in their effort to build their own communities with strength and sustainability. Um, this, my, my presentation is uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Yes. Presentation. I think I have a pre-recorded yeah. presentation because the internet instability. So um, if you could play that for me, please. Um. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me at the ICE conference in Hiroshima. Due to my schedule conflict, I'm joining remotely from Okinawa. My talk today is titled Okinawan Islands Epistemologies in the Women's Alumni Festival. Today's talk consists of four parts. First, uh, I will map a brief background history to the Women's Festival, and then introduce Women's Festival's objectivities and strategies focused on the first year of the festival. Third, I will engage in Unaiism, coined and theorized by an Okinawan feminist, Keiko Katsukata Inafuku, to expand on her theorization. Then I will conclude by arguing uh, its nuanced feminist critique as a form of making a transoceanic solidarity. Okinawa was an independent kingdom as the Ryukyu Kingdom uh, for approximately 450 years until 1879. In 1609, Ryukyu was militarily invaded by the Satsuma Han forces and incorporated into the Japanese Tokugawa era's feudal system. Okinawa became a prefecture of Japan in 1879. The Meiji government declared the Ryukyu as a feudal domain as part of their strategy to integrate the Ryukyus into their construction of a unified free modern state. The Meiji state never called the Ryukyus a colony. Rather, their colonization was facilitated by an instance that the Ryukyuans were Japanese. Hence, by making the Ryukyu Japanese, they reconfigured their holiness as a pre-modern and in need of modernization to emerge as Japanese. During World War II, the people of Okinawa were 
um, engulfed in the war's only grand battle on Japanese territory. After the war, Okinawa was placed under the U.S. administration until 1972, when Okinawa was reverted to Japan. The only ground battle took place at the castaway island between Japan and the Allied forces, which was known as the Battle of Okinawa, in which land battle was prolonged to protect um, infiltration into mainland and the emperor. Between one third and one fourth of the population of Okinawa, including women and children, were perished. The map on the left shows the approximately 70% of all U.S. military bases in the Japanese state are concentrated in Okinawa, even though it only makes up 0.6% of the Japanese state territory. The other map on the right shows increasing militarization today of the entire Okinawa archipelago by fortifying Japanese self-defense forces, some of which are equipped with a sur surface-to-ship missiles and surface-to-air missiles. This is a war prepar preparedness of a possible conflict over Taiwan. Many scholars have argued that the Japanese colonization, U.S. militarization, um, led to ongoing issues in Okinawa that affects women and children more severely through poverty, sexual violence, education, uh, access to education and resources, food and income security, and health. An Okinawan feminist scholar, Anna-Maria Shimaruku, and other scholars have argued that the reversion of Okinawa to Japan did not mean the end of colonialism. Instead, it placed Okinawa in a post-colonial state. Post-colonialism does not mean the end of colonialism, but continuation of uh, colonialism after so-called independence from the U.S. military occupation, as in an Okinawa scholar, Koya Nomura's words, colonialism ceased to be direct. This post-colonial state Okinawa was placed under tactfully avoids a series of entropic binary oppositions such as Japanese versus U.S., instead shows how both manipulate the language of democracy and colonialism to conceal a joint U.S.-Japan venture that are structurally the same despite uh, appearing different. Thus, according to Shimabuku, post-colonialism is therefore a mode of discussion, a practice that is alive in the shape of dominant discourses incoherence or entire realm of unspeakability. In a sense, the night festival was held to address the entire realm of unspeakability that Shimabuku referred to. That was most prominently embodied by the marginalized women's epistemologies by using unai, which means sisters in Okinawan word, evoking an Okinawan sense of sisterhood and solidarity. The Unai Festival was first held in November 1985 by those who attended the Unai Nation, a United Nations final year of De Decade of Women conference. The conference was themed a new uh, beginning for women towards the 21st century. Re resonating the Nairobi Conference, the theme of 1985 Unai Festival was World Unai Cultivating a Future. Since then, Unai Festivals were held annually for the next decade to bring together women from all over Okinawa Islands and from all walks of life, regardless of their occupations or marital status. Realizing the differently articulated women's social locations and the mainland Okinawa and smaller island preferality structure, Unai Festival organizers reached out to all women, including housewives, teachers, fashion designers, and others to join the celebration of women from all 36 inhabited islands of Okinawa. To summarize the festival, it started by a group of women who attended the World Women's Conference in Nairobi <coughs> and returned home in part by the International Women's Shared Epistemological Struggles. 
the night as a common ground for gathering. It is a one-day event from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. attended by approximately 1,300 uh, people at the opening ceremony. The main content consisted of a symposium, music concert, film screenings, lectures, and workshops that featured the status of, of women and articulations of women's issues in Okinawa. 40 workshop a booth for 40 women's groups uh, were held. Each of them had the same square feet booth. And there were also 100 women's voices event that were featured through radio broadcasting. A prominent Okinawan feminist scholar, Heiko uh, uh, Katsukata Inafuku, argues uh, that women's unai festival signifies what she calls unaiism, which is, uh, quote, the core of women, Okinawan feminism. Drawing on Gayatri Spivak's strategic essentialism, she argues that unaiism is an Okinawan strategic essentialism to shift from silence to articulation within the oppressive cultural hierarchy. As in all minority studies, it is necessary to wear a certain identity, she says. In addition, her notion that unaiism is the core of Okinawan feminism is intended to distinguish it from Japanese feminism. If we apply Katsukata Inafuku's theorization, perhaps evoking traditional ties with men via concept of unai builds a solidarity between Okinawan men and women. Suzio Takazato, one of the organizers, explained that the event did not intend to exclude men nor to be in a position to or deny men, but rather to consolidate women's power with men's to build a mutually supportive society. Father, the symposium speaker, Hisae Sawachi, addressed that aspect in her lecture stating that, quote, in order for men to be happy, women have to be also happy, but, and vice versa, unquote. And that, quote, a solidarity between men and women leads to the liberation of women, unquote. While their acknowledgement of the interdependencies between women, women and men seem to be made in a rather simplistic structure, their tactful delivery of gendered matters serve to create a solidarity with the Okina men um, as a first step to cultivate women's voices in the Okina patriarchal societal system. The head producer of the festival, Hiromi Ominamodo, added, uh, to this point further. In an ancient Okinawa uh, uh, society, Kunai meant female siblings, and in the home it was the guardian deity of male siblings. And in the community, it governed Okinawa society as the goddess of the community. While inheriting the pride of such Okinawa woman's role, the name Unai is not a return to ancient traditions, but rather an action to open the way to a new Unai in which people can live together with men with equal dignity as individual human beings. I want a woman, working on women, to articulate their own societal issues and voice them, which we name Women's Cultural Festival. Thus, the Unai Festival can be better understood as a gesture toward a radical openness in which people are dressed in the historically gendered relations of power and violence that permeate their individual everyday lives. This shows that the uh, women at Unai Festival not only acknowledges their tradition, but made sure to open a dialogue to address its problematics that burden women and press and present feminist critiques of the male-centered uh, culture. Hence, analytic of deconstructing Unai from women's perspectives and epistemic standpoints open up a subtle critique of Okinawan patriarchy while building a solidarity with men by celebrating women's important historical and societal roles in, in the Okinawan society. As in the picture called Unai Network, 
They used all the technologies available to them to reach out to Okinawa women and other women in different countries who were tackling similar intergenerational patriarchal issues. Um, for example, in Sweden, Brazil, Malaysia, the uh, Philippines, for instance. Rather than posit women's movement in the UNAI festival as mere agents by uncritically reinforcing the woman's role in, in the traditional Okinawan culture, um, I highlighted how post war Okinawan women negotiated the complex intergenerational inheritances of women's care for the members of the society, proposing alternative conceptions of womanhood and agency in an attempt to break ongoing cycles of Okinawan patriarchy. Okinawan women's deconstruction and redefinition of Unai, moreover, facilitated a multi-sided analysis of structural patriarchal issues across Asia making it an important locus of transnational critique during the UN Decade of Women and its uh, afterlives. In the UNAI Festival, what the organizing committee passed on to the next generation then was not the pressure to continue a tradition of UNAI as it was, but the opportunity to redefine Okinawan epistemologies. Thank you. for playing my video. Um, it was uh, recorded uh, at, at night, and <laughs> um, I was not as lively as uh, usual. Um, well, uh, we only have a few minutes uh, to uh, for Q and A. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I don't see the audience from my end, but uh, I think um, Professor Hatton and Professor Ikigam could help me to um, just facilitate. Okay, any question, comments for this panel? Now is the time before our lunch. I think we may have um, time for one question, um, and um, the rest of them would be maybe taken during the lunch <laughs> in person uh, to Professor Hadano and Ikeda. Hi. The smell of the food is not like in here. Of cultural heritage, 
And they always said authenticity is most important and uh, a political uh, historical correctness is most important issue. But for residents, it's not so uh, important. I, uh, do the residents believe that the historical the conservationist representation is historically accurate? Mm. Resident. Yeah. Do the residents believe that the conservationists' representations are historically accurate, or are they critical of those representations? I think uh, no. No. No, they are not critical. No. They think. No, they don't think that it is. Uh, as a resident, uh, conservation of uh, facility is not so important because they have the imagine, imagination or memories. So landscape, uh, uh, true landscape is not important. I'm sorry, I can't uh, hear very well on my end. Uh, but, um, uh, 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 Hi, I'm Shane Jibari from Hotel. Uh, so the first speaker, a uh, very broad question. What is authenticity for you? Do you consider authenticity as reality or the form of the structure? It's a big question, so I don't know if that works. Authenticity to one another. So that it's easier to answer for one. <laughs> <laughs> so yes or no, uh, is it useful for you more than the reality authenticity? Uh, for culture heritage manager, authenticity is rarity. Mm -hmm. But for residents, it's not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe for the residents, more the truthfulness of the fuller memory.